Welcome, Miss Chloe, to the Cafecito with the Coach podcast. How are you, love? Thank you. I have my my drink as well. Oh, Cheers. How- Okay, if you're watching this on YouTube, she's got a gorgeous, very fancy mug. Polish it's- mug from the Madre's stash at the house. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now, I know you're a big coffee connoisseur. How do you take yours? Lately, it's been fresh ground beans, French press, black, which is pretty dark. <laughs> yeah, but I'll go, I'll go across the gamut of different... Uh, amounts of milk amounts of sugar i'm not really a snob about how i how i take it but it's got to be in some format every morning yes absolutely absolutely especially as a beautiful um mama of two gorgeous girls we're going to get into all that here in a second but thank you so much for hopping on i have been a fan of yours actually for a little while following you like so we knew of each other growing up um here in the you know newport well i'll call it hampton roads virginia but people from this area don't know what that means eastern coastal virginia (laughs) so and i know that you are a multi-talented, multifaceted woman. And I am such a huge fan of your music and of your sound. If you ever hear Chloe, like I'm going to link all her stuff in the show notes, but she has such a distinct, she has one of these voices that when you hear it, you're like, that's Chloe Yahtzee. I know exactly who that (laughs) is. And that is such a gift, you know, to, to have. So I am so honored that you would hop on here and share what you got going on woman. So yeah, tell us a little bit about you, um, you know, about the Virginia connection as well as where you've been all over the world. Wow. Well, first of all, I'm blushing. Thanks for that intro. Um, (laughs) it's takes a long time to feel like you are yourself and you're not just always striving to be who you emulate. So when I get that feedback, it's like, did I, did I make it? But you know, it's an ongoing process. Um, yeah. So we're in the Hampton roads area, uh, again, after my couple years being here late high school and it's the time between high school and now, you know, I have a family, I've got kids and I'm rediscovering this area with fresh eyes in a more appreciative lens. Cause when I was younger, I thought it was super kind of lame and, and slow, but now that I'm older, like we left a city for that reason, not that it's lame, but that they're slower and it's really family friendly. And I, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I guess domesticated <laughs> in, a, in a good way, but, um, I was a military kid having been stationed, I think eight times and then landed here. So I was in overseas locations for eight consecutive years, which is the majority of my childhood memory. You know, you can't remember anything prior to being five. Like I was eight and we were in Germany, Turkey, and Japan. So, um, I always feel like, uh, always kind of like missed some pop culture references and always catching up, but you know, it's all subjective. So you and I met cause we were attending the same church while, while back and, we're both in different communities now, but we've been keeping up the music in our own lives. And um, when I met you, I would not have known or expected, or even it would have been like a too good to be true thing to be as saturated in professional performance as I am now. So it is really sweet. It was full circle. Cause when I met you, you were like, you know, probably one of the most prominent individuals in my life was someone who clearly owned their domain and had this very powerful presence when they were singing and and doing their thing um thank you so much wait a second (laughs) this is about you but thank you i received that girl i received that so much i really really appreciate that no problem (laughs) yeah so okay you are a multifaceted vocalist songwriter piano player. Tell us like, what were some of your first musical influences? And I know people will ask that question and they'll be like, oh my gosh, where, like, how far back do I go? Do I remember before eight years old? You know, what, Yeah. but when was the first time or when was the first time you sang or, you know, plunked on the piano and thought, wait, I like this and I 
I'm oh yeah doing it as far, <laughs> as far back as I can remember that's um of all the things I can remember precognizance that's me being at the piano or singing has you know it's kind of it never it never wasn't there um I Stevie Wonder has always been he's like the soundtrack of my life he has that uh, album sounds and the songs in the key of life mm-hmm. and I happened to catch him uh, I think in 2014 I was at a show uh, that he was on tour for that mm-hmm. that album and I almost like I was crying in my bleacher seat like I had you know the <laughs> we were nosebleed section of this big Verizon center stadium and I was like he has no idea how his voice is this undercurrent so many memories and road trips and hard times because him as an artist I mean I was I remember being four years old and realizing like wait because in my head everyone looked like I'll just say it I didn't know he was a black guy until I was like five because in my mind I'm just hearing this voice and I'm finding I'm res- I'm resonating it with it so much mm. that it was like wait a minute and it so it's funny to ever have thought that because obviously we all know what Stevie looks like, sounds like um, <laughs> who he is, but he's been my earliest influence. And I will say, even to this day, I just discovered a new song of his two days ago that I'd never heard before. And I was like, this is why he's the greatest of all time. Like you could, you could get all you needed out of jazz harmony, melodic, interesting lines and rhythm and band arranging and lyricism you could get you could just study his work from the time he was a kid and I think you'd be pretty likable you'd be highbrow you'd be pop culture savvy like he just spans the so I can't talk about him enough give him creds but other than that I moved around a lot and I was always playing by ear or I had some teaching of various levels meaning my teachers were at various levels in their own situation. Like they were full-time teachers or they were like my next door neighbor's dad who instilled a love for learning music um, by the radio. What was his name? Mr. Aaron. Um, uh-huh. He That was a turning point for me when I was 12. I think we played, he had me learn um, uh, some easy like Sunday morning by ear on the piano and it kicked off my singing and playing which I'd always wanted to do, mm-hmm. but I was 12, like living in Turkey, um, two years in Turkey. I will say this part of my musical obsession has also been, I think, accelerated by me feeling socially awkward. So I was kind of bullied in these different places that we'd moved to. And when you move, it's hard enough. And all I had is like a fallback was I can go to the piano and emote on this song I'm learning, or, you know, then I started learning things by ear. And so I started writing songs in Turkey in a uh, pretty dramatic filled middle school era for me, where I was the butt of a lot of bullying jokes and just social outcasts. And so um, in lieu of that, I turned to the piano a lot and kind of realized like there's way more than there's way more here than just me getting my fix and feeling better about something going on. Like there's, there's a magic here. So um, ever since then I would learn things as, as it occurred to me without any really, any real reason to just, I wanted to, there wasn't really anywhere to take it because I lived in the, all these overseas locations and there'd be maybe a talent show, but I was never brave enough to do it. Oh. And then when I got to the States, the high school here was a real turning point for me because I had all these options musically like musical theater and band Mm -hmm. and uh, even choir to a scale that pulled all right little people show what you got and that environment was a big accelerator for me to feel like okay maybe I can I'm not destined to be an air force person just because I grew up in the air force that's all I saw I'm here in the states almost for the first time in my, you know, I'm becoming a, I was in the States at age 16 for the first time going, there's so much more I could do with my life than putting on a military suit. I love music. What are the odds? And (laughs) that was 
kind of how I got my degree was going, what are the odds? Cause, um, JMU, James Madison university, go Dukes. <laughs> um, it was the only school that accepted my application and it was not where I wanted to go ironically, but they had this great school and I was kind of like, screw it. If I'm going to be at the school that I didn't even want to be at, cause this is the fate God dealt me, then darn it. I'm going to go after the most unemployed, un, un, um, what's the word for, you can't depend on something non-dependable, you know, <laughs> everyone, the broke musician life. I'm going to go after that, darn it, and get this degree. And it's kind of, it was a big joke because I've had a lot of fun with it and I've had decent success with it. And, but that's the, that's the, that's the why, that's the how it, I even, it wasn't out of like joy. It was almost like spite. Like I'm going to make something out of this situation that I'm not happy with and just stick it to the man that <laughs> I'm going to do music. Even if it means I'm never, whatever, you know, high achieving. It's really weird to look back at your psychotic psychosis when you're younger and your reasons for and how it carries you forward but I'm just being honest that's the that's the how we're here um so I went to school I got my degree learning on the go went to Austin Texas getting to Austin's a long story but I spent five years there I think really learning how to play really learning how to pull together um a group and you know being a professional having to lug my own stuff, show up on time, make my own way, essentially. And uh, can't say that completely because our own way is so much supported by other people making their own way who are reaching out and collaborating. And it's it's such an interesting industry because no one is on their own, truly, even when they're like all by themselves. Like you depend on your bandmates or your singer friends or your we're all looking out for each other. That's how we all survive, you know, getting jobs. Like I, you know, I don't know anybody who's just super independent. So big, big thanks to that community down in Austin. What I meant to say by having that, um, Hey, new kid, like, yeah, we got all these venues and we've got all these spots and Hey, I can't make it. You're, 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 you're good. Like, go. there's just such a fall forward feeling there and very uh, community oriented group of players that I was lucky enough to get connected to. So coming back to Virginia after that under my belt was pretty sad. Cause I was like, what are the odds that there's anything like that here? That's just, you know, again, every step too good to be true, too good to be true. <laughs> and then, um, that Proteus contest, which in our notes, I'm glad you mentioned it. Cause I'd probably <laughs> ramble and forget it completely. Um, so tell us a little bit, like tell uh, our listeners exactly what yeah, that stop is. Stop me from talking. Because, yeah. Um, th there are so many good things that you just said here in a minute, but I want you to tell us about the, the contest. Um, because what our listeners are probably hearing right now, like you said, is that, wait, one thing begets the other. Let me not mm -hmm. burn bridges, you know, mm -hmm. let me realize that this is the art of collaboration, right? So yeah, how did you come across um, this contest? What it, What is it? And then tell us what happened after that. Thanks. Keep me on track, Melissa. Don't let me <laughs> no. know. Everything you're saying Ooh. is beautiful. Go for it, mama. Um. Well, mama, okay. <laughs> this second baby nearly took my voice with her. Like I was two months gestating going uh, uh, where are you because my hormones were just radically different than the first girl yeah. I have two kids so the second one just she knocked the wind out of me I had a really hard time keeping up my chops um so when this contest came around I was six months six months postpartum and I was still very much wobbly feeling like man I've lost it I'm, you know, it's all, it's all your, in your mind. And then, you know, I can feel this way, but it's not the truth. There's always time sure, to develop back or to, to work out, you know, like I may have gotten lethargic. I may have gotten out of shape, but that doesn't mean I have to stay here. Mm -hmm. So this was the tension I was in when I learned about this Proteus contest. I knew that all it did was, is going to give somebody a show. And I was like, well, I have no shows here still. I haven't met anybody. This is a pretty fast track opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
someone had suggested I I apply, so I sent in a song and um, you know, made it all the way to the top five and then won the thing. And then because of that, there was this huge door of connections and players that saw what I could do there when one thing led to another. And now, you know, I'm playing once a week, twice a week, three times a week at different places around yes, town. I did a random, I was on, uh, I've been on TV a couple times. I was on the radio early January, like everything just like, boom. And I will, for your listeners, it's like, <laughs> what's the takeaway? Don't tell yourself I'm not ready because I have all these things to work on. Like if you have an opportunity that's like the only thing stopping you is you and your own ego, put the ego away, just have fun and see what happens because your only loss potential is you missing that opportunity. You, you have no idea what's going to come out of it. And I won this contest, objectively speaking, probably at my lowest confidence for my voice, mm -hmm. but my confidence in myself and what I'd gone through and kind of my confidence in God and going every time I've said, I can't, there's been something that comes out of trusting you in spite of that. I don't know what that's going to be, but here we go again. So the, the irony to me was like, we have no, we're never objective about ourselves. You know, we're always our hardest critic. Sure. You can't, I don't know. I was like, if, if, I'm, if my voice is technically not where I want it at, I know my spirit is exactly where it should be. Cause I'm feeling very much, um, I've gotten over myself in a lot of ways that mm -hmm. this contest, I feel very confident displaying that even if my voice, like I said, is not technically perfect. My, my ego is in check and I'm just so grateful to be here and I'm going to have fun. I'm going to meet people. And, um, here I we are. Yes, that what you said just there, the gratitude component, I think is the game changer. It is the magic ingredient, right? To really, you know, help us to be present as singers, right? Despite, like, again, perfect is an illusion. It does not exist, right? You know, so I think that's super encouraging for somebody right now who keeps um, shitting all over themselves. Like I should do this, mm. I should do that. I should wait for this. I should, no, 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 no. Just, just be faithful to the moment that you've been given. So Absolutely. you said something super interesting about how so much, and I've, I've experienced this too. I think every performing artist experiences this in some form or fashion. A step <laughs> making decisions or doing the show or doing the gig out of spite, right? Do you remember <laughs> at what, do you remember if there was a turning point where the spite became a spark of joy? Uh, oh, wait, I really do like this. Oh, wait, I really could see myself doing this. Yeah, um, so... Out of spite was, I don't know, out of spite to, honestly, I'll say this, to academia. Mm. Out of, in a way to like shuff off academia because all the schools that I had gunned for, that I had the GPA for, I had, I was like top 30 of my class. No, I wasn't valedictorian, but like I had over a four point, I had a 4.4 4 or something and I was still, 30th in my class like there were so many people who are more high achieving than me but all this ego me this is what I'm susceptible to not everyone's journey is their ego intellectually but mine has been so I was in competition with these people who are going to better schools Harvard Yale Stanford Georgetown UVA I was like I'm worthy of Georgetown I'm worthy of UVA I'm worthy of William and Mary they all said I wasn't so my ego is like, well, what am I going to become then if these places don't tell me I'm good enough for them? Because I want to be smart. I want to be the best. Me, 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 me. So the, it was like sticking it to that, that institution. Mm -hmm. If you're not accepted by academia, if you're not kissing ass, sorry, I don't know who's listening to this, but oh, it's all good. You know, <laughs> just be <it's>, yourself. <laughs> It's just, it's interesting how all those years ago, my temptation was to really give a crap about those institutions saying I was worth it. And all these years later, working with guys who went through those 
loopholes and they jumped those hurdles and they wrote those papers and they attended those lectures and they blah, blah, blah. And they'll tell me it's so much, it's just like who, you know, it's butt kissing. It's really, it's less and less about, um, and it's not everywhere, but <laughs> I, I, I was, I was spared. The Lord spared me from getting what I wanted to teach me humility and believing that where I was, was good enough because I was with him mm-hmm. and I was, I was going to go, okay, I didn't get what I wanted, but I'm not alone in this universe. I'm not this little speck floating around. Like you have a plan for me. And even though I don't feel it, I'm going to trust you with what I have. And I'm at JMU. I don't want to be here, but they have this great music program and I really love music. So I'm going to dive. I'm going to dare this direction. And so daring to go that direction was like, whoa, how is it this, how, how am I getting this much favor out of something that I didn't appreciate Mm. going into it. I did not appreciate the opportunity that I was given by getting denied to all these places. Right. So um, there was a moment actually to answer your actual question. I set you up. I was walking (laughs) (laughs) through the stairwell of my school. I think I was having to learn an aria that I was really enjoying because I have a jazz degree, but the way that the program is there, I had to take some classical courses, much to my non-delight. I didn't enjoy it because <laughs> I struggled to meet in the middle the contemporary stuff I was learning with the classical training I was getting. There was no middle ground there. Doesn't mean that's the same everywhere, but I'll just say for that location, I was having to figure that out by myself and I was struggling, but I was really enjoying this aria, kind of like, oh, surprise. And I felt like I was, um, I realized studying music, having music as my hobby, my vocation, my career, whatever it was going to become for me, I was actually just getting to explore beautiful things. Hmm. Like if you just simplified it, just beautiful things. What does music do for you? It reminds you what's beautiful. Okay. You don't have to stop there. You can cultivate your whole little world to appreciate beauty. You can make your room beautiful, take care of your room, decorate it the way you want. Like don't discount. It's just your room Buy the $5 sheet from target, make your bed, like get something that you think is beautiful because that's the privilege that you have with that room. With what I'm doing musically, I get to just explore beautiful sounds and it can be in any genre and as long as I'm appreciating it for what it is, and it's not about me, it will feed me in a healthy way. It won't take from me where I'm always like feeling like I'm not good enough to play it. Or it's, Mm. I'm not, I'm not like that person who I wish I was more like, like all of that, just, it's not about out here. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, what, what else we have to do except with the time that's been given to us is to find beauty in those things that admit it, you enjoy it. Now don't overthink it, enjoy it and go forward, keep going. Like, you know, so that was a big turning point in school. Like, wow, I got here after all this time and never, never expecting to be a JMU, never expecting to get a music degree, like from a little kid to being a kind of an adult, young adult going, man, I might graduate and I might do this professionally being, I just get to do beautiful music. I get to explore this and it should have been as simple as that all along, but it was very ego heavy going into it. And that's, it's not like it went away immediately, but we can get there. Is that making any sense? (laughs) Ramble, ramble. sense. I'm just like amening inside really, really hard. If I I like my inner hanky is like flying around for all you like church of God listening. (laughs) No, it's beautiful. And so with that, you know, somebody can, can look at you, you know, and, and see how successful you've been in there again, like you said, being present and acknowledging what's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with saying that you have accomplished so many beautiful things and it's okay to be like, yeah, yeah, I have. And I'm, and, and approach it from gratitude. But for somebody who may be seeing that, whether they know your story or not, you know, and they're like, oh, I want, (laughs) I want that or whatever. How, 
how would you advise somebody who's you know starting to gig more get out there hashtag gig life right and <laughs> help them how do you what your what would your advice be when they're stuck in that scarcity mindset to one of abundance right where there's a mm. seat at the table there's a place for your voice your style the way that you do it the way that you do that stevie wonder cover right how what would your advice be for them what would i what is it what is what do i have to tell myself when i feel like that too right <laughs> right i'm like maybe i'm the person right like no constantly telling ourselves this Ooh. right like okay i'm just i'm just praying that any words i share would be uplifting and you know, the voice of the creator who has the authority to give encouragement, not me. Okay. I'm just another person. And I don't, I don't, I have no creative authority over another person, but I have been blessed to hear from the creator. And I feel like that's the only business I have sharing that hope. So the temptation that you just described, scarcity mindset, I'm not good enough. I need to be quiet. I need to like that's so real. That's the human experience. And um, when you look at somebody who has what you think is, is, is the, they're on the rung of the ladder that you wish you were at, or they're on that notch of achievements that you think if you had been better, or if you um, were worth it, or you were different, you would be worth achieving as well. You have to ask yourself if you would like to have their whole life too. So if they are at the Grammys this year and you worked with them last year and you guys are kind of on the same page, but in a whole year's time, they accelerated to being at the Grammys and you're still at home playing at restaurants. Ask yourself if you would trade your life for everything that's going on in theirs, including going to the Grammys. So what else do they have going on? They, um, you know, they binge drink on a weekly basis and they're struggling with that, or they have a really bad relationship with their, like you, you, if you are going to compare yourself to other people's lives, you need to be willing to accept everything that their life produced. Wow. And if you won't, mm -hmm. you logically need to stop yourself, but you also need to be thankful for what you have and then that that gap that you're witnessing go okay not everything that looks good is coming from the right place not everything that looks like a reward is a reward in the way that you think it is like I think that we do battle light and dark mm -hmm. energy you know if I'm gonna de-christianize it but um there's a kingdom that I want to be a part of and I don't want to be a part of the kingdom of right here, right now, earth is all there is, world materialism is all there is, and I'm going to get rich quick while I'm here, and then I'm going to die in a snuff of energy, and no one's, hopefully I'm remembered. There are people that live that way. I, I talk to them all the time. They, I ask them, why are you doing this? What's your end goal? And they like, I want people, I want other people to applaud me when I'm old. I want other people to tell me I was worth honor and awe mm -hmm. and in my head I'm like I get that but there's there's something that comes after your old age there's something that comes after death are you are you playing now are you are you valuing what you have now are you valuing the life that you have now for that end date because it comes to us all we all die and if we're living here for as many eyes that we can attract as possible from other men, then we'll have missed out on the forever that comes when we die. There's like, there's, if there's no, you can get both, but if you're only going after the earth, you'll only get the earth. Mm -hmm. If you're going after the eternal, you may, you may possibly get earth too thrown in there, but it won't be because that's your reward. That's the, that's like a cherry on top for the reward of the eternal. And I know people, like I just said, they're at the Grammys or they're performing with players that, you know, I have listened to for years, like um, big jazz names I could mention that 
depending on your listening demographic, have no idea who they are. Like if I would ever get a chance to perform with them, I'd feel like I'd made it. Okay. And so these people are younger than me. They are single. They have no kids. They're living the very glamorous life of traveling the world. And I will be tempted to go, man, here I am a mom of two kids in this little tiny town where there's really not that much going on. And, you know, I have to like every, and I'm like, I wouldn't trade my life for that. Cause that's fleeting. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a day when they're on their deathbed and they have to ask themselves what kind of life they live. What kind of life am I living? That's stop there. Quit envying. You know, I totally get that. That's been one of the biggest paths with God that I've been walking through mm -hmm. since I was self-aware enough to pray to him. I'm envious, Lord. I want that. I don't, it's, and it had a lot to do with music, mm -hmm. but then when you crack the music, you get down into self-worth, you get down into the way, you know, you were raised and parenting and there's, it's so much more than just music. It is your entire individual value system that music for us because we're musicians that's like a very surface level way to tap into it but for everyone it's different it can, somebody's somebody's high driven in business and so their value is set by their business accolades or someone is you know anyways I'm rambling but <laughs> that's my advice is if you want to perform you're starting from nothing you know have a larger vision for your life than just getting the gig are you going to sleep content with the thoughts you thought about strangers that day? Or are you a person who's full of envy and judgment and comparison and gossip that even if you were to get successful musically, you'd still be a pretty crummy human being. And that's what you have to, that's like, what's your reward truly? Is it getting all the accolades from men and rewards and albums and stage time and who's who clapping you on the shoulder, which fades, or is it, I go to bed tonight and I'm cozy in my bed and I'm pleased and I'm innocent almost of meaning any harm to my fellow man mm -hmm. and having a longer, a longer trajectory of hope and goals for my life than, you know, right here, right now, earth. Because I could get into like the vanity of youth too and how we all feel like we're up against the time sure. ticking clock, especially when we're women and we're in this industry. It's so I, I get it. It's just, it's hard, but you can't do it alone. If, if you're trying to do it by yourself or you're looking at other people to tell you, hey, tell me, we're just, we're on this, I'm on the same page as you. We're both on this horizontal level. You need to get that vertical input and I can't give it to you. I can encourage you that it's real, mm -hmm. but you need to test it for yourself because then it's going to stick. And, you know, it, you won't be getting filled from the wrong places as you go on that path. Great advice, Chloe. Great advice. All right. So you have the reward, the earthly reward <laughs> of this contest coming up here <laughs> in just a couple of weeks when this episode airs, right? And so tell us a little bit about what we're going to experience that night at your concert. So if it, all, if it all goes according to plan, because I'm trying to juggle right now, organizing my stuff well enough in advance for these guys <laughs> while I'm in the middle of like a health problem with my kid, and you know financial situations being what they are we're all living in 2024 america am i right <laughs> so um yeah it, it'll be me at the keys playing 12 to 13 songs that are unheard they're brand new to the world to me they're old because i've been seeing them for years but i've never had an opportunity to put them all stacked like this mm -hmm. with a full band so I'll have some background vocals. I'll have some, I'll have, a, I'll have a bass drum kit and trumpet player. And it'll be hopefully, a, you know, if it's anything like the gigs I'm doing now that just, they become something there's, it's very casual. I'm at a restaurant, you know, it ends up being everybody's grooving in their chair 
And, you know, people are coming up to me going, I could just sit there and close my eyes and let the music wash over me. It's like, okay, no one's telling me to turn down. Thank God. No one's telling me it's too loud. And they're able to dance. And then like, you know, I get some tears every other week. So that's cool. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to bring my, I hate to say my story. I think that's so cliche. Obviously we're all sharing our story, right? But like, it's not about me. I want people, if this is at all possible, I want people when they go to my shows or go to this show, I want them to feel like, I want them to have that feeling they get when they walk out of a movie that makes them so appreciative of their real life. You know what I mean? Like I've walked out of movies where I'm like, man, my life is so boring and that's just so cool. And it's complete fantasy. It's not real. And then, then those other movies that you're going, oh, thank God I have children. I love my children. Thank God. You know what I mean? I can't even think of a movie, but there's that tangible, visceral feeling in my heart. And I'm like, that movie made me appreciate my life. I don't, I'm not wanting to be anywhere else. I'm not wanting to be like that actress because mm -hmm. she's got her own, like, I appreciate right here, right now. I want my music to do that for other people too. And obviously it comes from my lived experiences, like a lot of people, but um, yeah. What, what, else, what else should I add? <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. So we'll put all that information in the show notes where people can get tickets and all that good stuff. If they want to connect for, you know, for people obviously who don't live close by, but they want to find you, they want to listen to what you're working on and how to connect with you. How would they find you? The catch-all for the non-tech savvy is my website. If you're an oldie but a goodie, just go to my <laughs> website. And you can find the buttons there that lead to my social medias. But if you're on Instagram, I'm on Instagram the most. I think it's just my generation, but it's my first and last name. Facebook's identical. I'm not on really anywhere else. Um, I just have a couple songs streaming, but we didn't even get into that. But um, they are, in my mind, they're like demos. They're, they're demo worthy. They're like, Hey, look what I can do. Um, much, much appreciation to the people that helped me pull those together, but there's a couple on Spotify just two, And then I'm kind of putting stuff on Bandcamp that I'm doing at home. Little, little, uh, like just experimental. I'm doing my own mixing on those songs. So I'm playing with EQ and different fun buttons that I usually would pay someone else to do, but time is time is money. And I'm playing around now myself, seeing what I can put out there. So exactly. it's mostly, it was mostly for my band to be able to hear stuff. But now that I've started this process, like I can actually just keep self recording. Mm -hmm. And then when it really matters, I can send it off to somebody else to produce, but I'm on Bandcamp, SoundCloud and those other pages I just mentioned. Fantastic. We will make sure we got it all right here so people can find you, Chloe. You are well wise beyond your years, my love, and such a light. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what else you do and how you reach people with your message and that encouragement to be present, be thankful for where you're at right now. And I'm certainly grateful for you, woman. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you so much.